So uh, we are going to talk about non-parametric tests, okay? So here we will not compare parameters, okay? All right, and this will be a compromise in a situation. Now we use these non-parametric tests when we are not able to make assumption about the shape of the population, all right? Because uh, remember this, you had, let's say, for instance, when you use the t-test, you had to assume that the population from which you draw the sample is normally distributed, right? So in this example, we are going to consider two sample tests, okay, of comparing two populations. And so far, when we were comparing the population means, and we did not know the population standard deviation, we were using two sample t-test, and the assumption was that we have independent random samples from the two populations, and the, both the populations have normal distributions. Is that correct? Uh, but see, the trouble is that, say, when we have a small samples, all right, like even if we had some skewness in the samples and the sample sizes were large, the robustness of T is still let us use the t-test, right? But when we have small samples and the samples have heavy outliers, then we and we have reasons to be suspicious that the population may not be no normally distributed. So our conclusions may be affected if we are still using the t-test. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. So in such situations, when we have sample sizes really small, okay and the assumptions for the normally distributed population may be violated from the indications from the sample. One of the ways to handle that is this test, it is called Wilcoxon rank sum test, okay? All right? All right. Now, we call it non-parametric because we would not be able to compare the means of the two populations in, in our, you know, in the manner of our previous calculations, but we may still be able to see whether one pop, whether the values in one population are like lower or higher than the other population, or in some of the packages you may, you may see whether the shift is to the right or to the left, or the shift is, or if just there is a shift, okay? So the scheme here will be this that instead of using the actual values in the determination of p-value, we will use the ranks of the values. Just like when you, comp when you found the median, you did not do any calculation with the values, right? You did this, you just ranked the values in the order and the middle one was median, right? So in the same style. So let's consider this example that there are two branches of a company and they have two routes connecting them all right just like in our area you know you can go to the go to college park like using ICC or uh, you know or the beltway all right in case you want to drive through the highways okay and the company will like to test whether the travel time we you know via the route a are lower than those via the route B, all right, okay? And uh, what they do is that they take simple random samples, all right, mm -hmm. of trips that have been taken by using the two routes, all right? And the level of significance that uh, we are being given here is say 0 0.01. So what our decision will be based on? If the p-value is less than 0 0.01, we will reject the null, all right, and conclude that the travel times via the route A are lower than those via the route B, right? So here we have the data in minutes, all right? So on, like on 12 randomly selected, you know, samples for the routes A and route B for the driving times, okay? So here we have the route A, here we have the route B, 
all right and of course here you can see that most, that here we have lower values but this is this has two strong outliers right and sample sizes are 12 which is not really very large okay but uh, so so we you know we would be a little reluctant to use the two sample t-test with the tools that we have so far okay so what we are doing here is this that I'm color coding the values for B as red all right just to distinguish later so see this is the smallest value of these all so it gets the lowest rank of how much one right this is the next one up so it gets it gets the rank two all right then the next one up is this gets the rank three further one is this gets the rank four all right and if there are ties all right then what you do is just like you did in the case of median all right okay you go ahead and like take the average okay and you'll see that in another example so what happens here the blue ones uh, sorry the black ones are the ranks for what the route a right and the red ones are the ranks for the route b okay so far so good so what we have done here is that here in this column we have written the ranks for the values of a or the, for the values in a and here in the column b we wrote the ranks in the values for the values in b all right now we are going to use the variabilities of the rank sum all right so for example the total for all these is 117 for these is 183 right okay so the rank sum or this sum of the ranks of the times for the route a is lower than that for the route b but now we want to compute the p-value just to see whether it could have been just the luck of the draw just the chance factor because there'll be many 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 trips all right via those two routes so we'll see whether this could happen just by chance right so you know what did i mean by chance is this that here the black ones are the ranks for the route a right and the red ones uh, are the ranks for the route b right but in another sample they could be different right could, and there are many many such samples possible right so in those samples you know the, these orders may be different so we just want to compute the probability that what was the chance of obtaining this particular one okay so so as I said, there are many other possibilities of the ranking, all right? And here what we have is, here are just some of them, right? Actually, so here are two other possibilities that could happen, right? So we want to see the probability based on all the possibilities that may show up, right? So as I said, that there are many other possibilities for the rankings if the values of A and B are from the same distribution and here are the here are a couple of different possibilities as I showed you before so here we come back to our original situation right that the rank sum for the route a is 117 and that for the route B is 183 right and we want to compute the probability that we will sh see such a low or lower rank sum in case there is no difference between the two distributions right so again you know the, the rank sum here is 117 and here is 183 and that's what the sample showed us right so symbolically i'm calling w sub a or i'm using this symbol for the rank sum for group a and this symbol for the rank sum for group b all right and we're going to see that how they are like how, how do they vary so th theoretically if we have two such groups all right okay then 
So the rank sum WA, that is the sum of the ranks of the values in the group A, that will vary. So the, the, the mean for all the possible values of w, WA will be this, where NA, ha, NA is what? The number of observations in A, which in our example was 12, right? makes sense and nb is the that number of observations for the group b and this big n is sum of these two all right okay and na and nb don't have to be equal in this case they did happen to be equal okay so in this case the mean is this value and the standard deviation is this value right okay and in addition, if both the groups have more than 10 observations, which they do in our example, they had both 12 each, then this will vary approximately according to a normal distribution, okay? So, so back to our values, both the samples had 12 observations in each, right? So this tells us, and, and this is the mean of the of all possible values of WA, and this is the standard deviation, right? So if we substitute these values in, then this value will come out to be 150, right? And this will be, I just plugged in the values and computed it, it's 17.3, all right? So now, we have a approximately a normal distribution with mean 150 and a standard deviation of 17.3 and what our p-value will be that wa is less than or equal to 117 all right okay as we observed in our sample right so our alternative here was what that the values in a will be lower than the values in b and we are assuming identical distributions for both now the thing is so alternative here is left sided right that is less than and the p value will be the probability that wa is less than or equal to 117 as i said all right, and we will just go ahead and compute the probability that a normally distributed random variable with a mean 150 and a standard deviation 17.3 will take on a value less than 117. Okay, so far so good. So we have to compute this probability, right? Okay, so what do I do? I go to distributions, right? And then which option do I choose to compute the normal curve area? This uh, normal CDF, right? And then I have to do what? Put the lowest possible value, right? And the lowest possible value in this case will be zero, right? Won't it be? But it's still, we let's go ahead and put it according to, I mean, doesn't hurt say just a moment let me just put it uh, here uh, negative 10 to the 99 i mean i'm put, putting it just just for the sake of putting it this way even if you put zero you should get the same answer in in this particular case okay so then i have 117 and then the standard mean is 150 all right and the standard uh, deviation is how much? 17.3, okay. All right, so what's the p-value then? 0 0.2, 0 0.028, right? And that is not less than 0 0.01, all right? So what we will do, we will not reject the null, right? 